This video series is to accompany the Cisco Netacad IT Essentials 7.0 course. This video is Chapter 11, Windows Configuration. In Chapter 11, we're going to look at Windows Desktop and File Explorer, configuring the windows with control panels, systems administration, command line tools, Windows networking, common preventative maintenance techniques, and basic troubleshooting process for Windows operating systems. Windows Desktop and File Explorer. Since 1985, there have been over 25 versions of Windows. Windows comes in 32-bit or 64-bit editions. And in the case of Windows 10, 12 editions were developed and released. However, only nine are currently being offered. And Windows 11, Windows 11 is currently being promoted by Microsoft since 2021. Windows 7, was released in October of 2009. It was successful. It was one of the operating systems that I used for a long time. Um, it offered improvements to the interface, performance, and file explorer, including the first appearance of libraries and home group for file sharing. And Microsoft offers extended support for Windows 7 until January of 2020. Windows 8 was released in October of 2012. It included a major revision in the Windows interface. Windows 8 was designed to be more compatible with touchscreen, tablets, and mobile devices, and the interface changes were unpopular, is a, probably an understatement, and it made it difficult for some users to learn. And because of that, Windows, Microsoft came out with Windows 8.1, and it was released one year after Windows 8. It included a start screen familiar to users, much it looked a lot like Windows 7, and it had a full start menu button in the taskbar. It included new functionalities, and an easier configuration option for the desktop GUI interface. Windows 10 was released in July of 2015. It improved again on the desktop interface. It had universal apps and it had a Windows Action Center and it replaced the charms. It offers a return to the desktop oriented interface. It supports universal apps. It introduced the Microsoft Edge web browser and the new updated model with feature updates twice yearly and quality and community cumulative updates monthly and now we're in a process where Windows 11 is being rolled out. The Windows desktop was called, the default theme of it was called Aero, A-E-R-O. The different versions um, or Windows versions and above had the following features, a shake where you could take a window and shake it and then um, the windows that were not being used would disappear or get minimized. You had peek, viewed the desktop icons that are behind open windows by placing your cursor over the show desktop button found on the right edge of the taskbar, and snap, you could resize a window by dragging it to one of the edges of the screen. And users could place gadgets on the desktop. Gadgets are small applications such as games, sticky notes, calendar, clock, web, um, weather applications, things like that. The Windows 8 desktop included tiles on the start screen. It, optimi it was optimized for mobile devices. It had a revised task manager and charm bar of five icons accessed by placing the cursor in the upper right-hand corner of the screen um, or swiping your finger in from the right side of the screen on, the, or on a touchpad. And then the Windows 8.1 desktop went back to the traditional Windows 7 look. It had a taskbar, a start button, and pinned program icons. Users can personalize their desktop. You had themes, or you have themes, uh, fastest way to change the look and feel of the Windows GUI. They had the apps environment. On the desktop start screen, you'd have tiles, start screen, and search. And then you could personalize your window. You could change the desktop appearance, display settings, and sound settings. On the Windows 10 start menu, applications are in alphabetical order. If you click on the start button, they pop up. And then shortcuts to common li libraries, including settings and shutdown buttons, are over here on the left-hand side. On the Windows 8.1 and 8.0 start menu, it had a limited start menu. And the Windows 7 start menu had the pop-up applications, which is what Windows 10 went back to looking like. Uh, but these were not in alphabetical order. You could put them in alphabetical order, but they were not. Um, you had different elements that were on there as well. And you could customize the start menu in Windows 7 by right-clicking an empty section of the taskbar and choosing Properties, Start Menu, and Customize. The taskbar or the start menu, um, all of the applications installed on their computer, a list of recently opened documents, and to customize the Start Menu in Windows 7, you could right-click on an empty section and go to Properties, Start Menu, and Customize. The Windows Task Manager functions, you have Processes. That's a set of instructions started by the user, a program, or the operating system. Performance is a dynamic system performance graphs for a variety of options, including your CPU, memory, disk, Ethernet. You had your App History. 
You have the startup shows the processes that are automatically begin that will automatically begin during when the window startup users details and services. Windows seven task manager has six tabs. The task manager differences in Windows 10, the application and processes tabs have been combined in Windows 10. The networking tab is included with the performance tab in Windows 10, and the users tab has been enhanced in Windows 10 to not only show the users that are connected, but also the resources that they are using. The file explorer, um, it's used for file management in Windows 8 and Windows 10. In Windows 7, it's used, um, Windows Explorer was used for file management in Windows 7 and earlier. The ribbon is used for common tasks such as copying and moving files and creating new folders. The tabs at the top change based on what is selected. And File Explorer is used to navigate the file system, manage files, folders, and subfolders, manage applications on storage media, and preview some types of files. In Windows 10 and 8.1, the PC or this PC feature allows you to access the various devices and drives installed on the computer. Windows 7, the same feature is called Computer. And to open the PC or open this PC, you want to open File Explorer and it will display the PC feature by default. In Windows 8 and 7, you click to the start and selected computer. The run as administrator is used when you want to elevate privileges. Modern operating systems improve security by only allowing users with enough permissions to access files. System files and other user files um, need elevated permissions. And so to override this behavior and gain access to those files, you must open and execute them as the systems administrator. So to open or execute a file using elevated permissions, you right click on the file, choose run as administrator, click yes in the user account control window. Windows of libraries allow you to easily organize content, including removable media without actually moving the files. A library is a virtual folder that presents content from different locations within the same view. When Windows 10 is installed, each user has six default libraries as shown in the figure over here. In Windows 10 and Windows 8, the libraries are hidden by default and you just right click on the left pane of the file explorer for the content context menu option that can show the libraries. Directory structures, the root level of the Windows directory structure, the partition is usually labeled drive C. Directories may contain additional directories called subfolders and the number of nested folders is limited by the maximum length of the path to the folders. In Windows 10, the default limit is 260 characters. And the figure here shows several nested folders in the file explorer. And you see the uh, breadcrumb trail here where you can see where the files were. And on the left hand side, you can see the same thing, the directory, same directory structure. With user file and system file locations, user folders, Windows stores more of the files created by users in the C user username. In system folders, most files used to run Windows OS are found in the Windows System 32 location. And then program files, it's used most by most application installations. You'll either find it in the program, um, program files or program x86 files area. Windows uses file extensions. Files adhere to the Windows naming convention. You have a maximum of 255 characters being allowed. Characters such as a slash or a backslash are not allowed. And then an extension of three or four letters is added to the file name to identify the file type. For example, a photo is a PNG. A Word document would be DOC or DOCX. File names are not case sensitive. And by default, the file extensions are hidden from the user. Files have attributes. The most common file attributes are R for read only, A for telling uh, the archive or the file will be archived the next time there's the disk is backed up. S, the file is marked as a system file and there's a warning given if an attempt is made to delete or modify. And then H is a hidden file or directory. Configure windows with control panels. Windows 10 offers two ways to configure the operating system. You can use the settings feature or you can go to the control panel. The control panel, systems administrators prefer the control panel to the settings app. To start the control panel, type control panel in the search box and click the control panel desktop app. If you right click on the result, you can pin it to the start and make it easier to find. You have different views in the control panel. You can open up categories view by default, but both views also provide a search box which will return a list of control panel items. You can define control panel categories, system and security, views and configure security settings, network and internet, hardware and sound, programs, user accounts, ease of access, clock and region, and appearance and personalization.
User accounts are set up on a Windows system. The user accounts control panel provides options to help you create, change, and delete user accounts. An administrative account is created when Windows is installed. And then to create a user account, you open the user accounts control panel, click on create account. You can then change the type of it or set the type of it. Standard user accounts can manage most configuration settings that don't affect other users. Standard user accounts can only access their own files and folders. And then some features of the user account utility require administrative privileges and will not be accessible with the standard user account. You have user account control settings or the UAC. It monitors programs on the computer and warns users when an action might present a threat to the computer. In Windows 7 through 10, you can adjust the level of monitoring that the UAC performs. The default UAC setting for the primary account is notify me only when the programs try to make changes to my computer. You can adjust the UAC level to change when you are notified about changes that programs may make to your computer. The Credential Manager. The Credential Manager helps you to manage passwords that are used for websites and Windows applications. These passwords and usernames are stored in a secure location. However, I personally don't use this area. I use something different. I don't use the uh, credentials here. You can view and edit and or delete the credentials that are stored by the, the credential manager. Web credentials are not safe for sites accessed by browsers other than Internet Explorer and Edge. You have the Sync Center. The Sync Center allows files to be edited from multiple windows or devices. The Sync Center allows for a form of version control. Files can be synchronized manually or can be set up to synchronize automatically. And then Microsoft OneDrive offers a similar service, and OneDrive is a cloud service that is available to Microsoft Windows users, and it is being pushed heavily by Microsoft for users to use OneDrive instead of the sync setup. In fact, I think newer Windows versions may be removing the sync setup. Network settings. The network status app in Windows 10 combines many different functions into one high-level app. It also links the control panel items like the network and sharing center. And some of the options are airplane mode, mobile hotspot, data usage, which are re relevant to mobile devices. You have a general tab, the connections tab, the privacy tab, the content tab, the connections tab, and the programs tab. And finally, you have the advanced tab. The network and sharing center. Network, the network and sharing center allows an administrator to configure and review almost all of the network settings on a Windows computer. You can view the network status and the internet connectivity. You can change properties of protocols and services, configure file and device sharing, and then network profiles enable basic sharing settings to change depending on whether it's a private or a public network. The home group, uh, it's intended to make networking in the home easier by requiring a minimum, uh, minimum amount of configuration. You can share your library folders on the network, making it easier for devices to access your music, videos, photos, and so forth. Users will need the home group to password in order to join the home group and access shared resources. Home groups were used in Windows 7 and 8, but Microsoft's been phasing out the home group functionality with Windows 10 and Windows 11. The display setting and configurations. The Windows 10 display settings are reached by clicking on an empty area of the desktop and selecting display settings. You can change the appearance of the desktop by modifying the resolution. And if the screen resolution is not set properly, you might get unexpected results. And you can also change the magnification of the desktop and text size in the Windows interface elements. In Windows 8 and Windows 7, display control panel items included display, screen resolution, the orientation, the refresh rate, display colors, and multiple displays. You have the power options. The power options control panel allows you to change the power consumption of certain devices. You can use power options to maximize battery performance on mobile devices or conserve energy by configuring a power plan. And then one important difference from Windows 7 to Windows 8 is that the setting that requires a password when the computer wakes has been moved from power to user accounts in Windows 10. And that's an important setting for data security. Windows has preset power plans. And a note is that power option settings will be will be vary based on the hardware that is detected. In Windows 8, you can choose from the following options. Require a password on wake up. Choose what the power buttons do. Choose what closing the lid does for laptops creating a power plan, choose when to turn off the display, and choose when the computer sleeps. Other options are if users don't want to completely shut down a computer, you can say do nothing on the power button. So if you, on, on battery or when plugged in, so it says when I press the power button, what do you want it to do? When I press the sleep button, what do you want it to do? Or when I close the lid of my device, what do you want it to do? The system control panel item allows all users to view the basic system information, access tools, and configure advanced systems. The Windows 10 system control panel item is shown here. 
The system control panel is very similar in Windows 7 and Windows 8. And the various settings can be accessed by clicking the links on the left-hand panel. The little shield there is letting you know that you will need administrative rights to access those settings. On their system properties, you can see the computer name or reset the computer name if you have the correct access. The hardware, advanced is configuration settings for performance, user profile, startup, and recovery. System protection and remote. Now there's some performance options that you can do to enhance performance on the operating system. You can change the virtual memory configuration. When Windows determines that the system RAM is insufficient, it'll create a paging file on the hard drive that contains some of the data from the RAM. This process is much slower than accessing RAM, but if you're limited on RAM, it does help. And if a computer has a small amount of RAM, it does, um, does help, but you might want to consider purchasing more RAM. And another form of virtual memory is the use of an external flash drive in Windows Ready Boost to enhance system performance. The Device Manager control panel area displays a list of all the devices installed in the computer, allowing you to diagnose and resolve device problems. The Device Manager utility uses icons to indicate the type of problems that may, ha may be existing. You have to update a driver, you can change the current install driver, roll back a driver, uninstall a driver, or disable a device. Sometimes you need to uninstall a driver or uninstall the device altogether, reboot the Windows operating system, and then sometimes it will just fix itself. Devices and printers. Devices are displayed in the devices and printers control panel. They're typically external devices you can connect to your computer through a port such as USB or network. In most cases, Windows will automatically install any necessary drivers that are required by the device. And a note that the desktop computer device in the figure shows a yellow triangle alert indicating that there's a problem with the driver. And the green check mark next to the device indicates that it's used as the default device. In the sound area, you can use the sound control panel to configure audio devices. For example, you can change the email notification sound from a beep to a chime or put another type of uh, sound on there. It also allows users to choose which audio devices should be used for playback or recording. The clock allows you to change the date and time. You can adjust your time zone. Windows will automatically update the time settings when the time changes because it will connect to the internet and get the current time. The Windows clock will automatically synchronize with the time authority on the internet. And the date and time is accessed through the clock and region control panel on Windows 10. And in Windows 7 and 8, it's accessed through the clock language and region control panel category. The region tab allows you to change the format of the numbers, currency, dates, and times. Windows 10 attempts to use location services to automatically detect the location of the computer. The location can also be set manually if the location can't be determined. And the date and time settings can be changed by changing the display patterns available. You can click additional settings to change the number and currency format. And then additional date and time formats are also available. You can change the language. In Windows 7 and 8, language can be configured through the control panel. And in Windows 10, it, can, it was moved to the region settings app shown in the figure to the right. When adding a language, you can even choose to install Cortana support for voice commands in that language if it's available. The programs features control panel. Um, it's, I, it's used to install a program from your computer. It's important that applications be uninstalled either through the programs and features control panel or from an uninstallation menu choice. Don't just go and delete the folders because it, there's a lot of things that need to get uninstalled. In addition, you can repair the installation. You can also troubleshoot problems with programs that were made for older versions. And you can choose to manually install software from the network. Windows features and updates. You can activate and deactivate Windows features like the ones on the right. Programs and features also allow you to view the Windows updates that have been installed and uninstall specified updates if they're causing problems. You can set default programs. Windows does set default programs, and but you can change those if you don't like the current browser. If you don't like the Microsoft Edge browser and you want to change it to another browser, you can go and do that for your default program. Or if you want to um, open up um, documents, instead of having Microsoft Word documents, if you want to use OpenOffice, you can have that be your default program. When you troubleshoot, there's a troubleshooting control panel. It has a number of built-in scripts that are used to identify and solve common problems. The scripts run automatically and can be configured to automatically make the changes. And you can also view when the troubleshooting, troubleshooting scripts have been run in the past by using the View History feature. The BitLocker Drive Encryption, it's a service provided with Windows that will encrypt an entire volume of disk data so that it can't be read by unauthorized parties. Data can be lost if your computer or disk drives are stolen. So in addition, when the computer is taken out of service, BitLocker can help ensure that the hard drive can't be read. 
and the BitLocker control panel items enables you to control the way BitLocker operates. You just want to make sure that you've properly saved your credentials, your passwords for your BitLocker, because it is difficult to uh, crack the encryption on BitLocker if you've set proper passwords. File Explorer and Folder Options. The File Explorer options in Windows 10 permit changing a variety of settings regarding the way files are displayed. Folder options in Windows 7 are very similar. And in Windows 10, many of the most commonly used files and folder options can be found in the File Explorer ribbon. Systems Administration. The Administrative Tools Control Panel um, allows you, it's a collection of tools that are used to monitor and configure Windows or operations. The control panel has evolved over time. Windows 7, it was somewhat limited. With 8, they had more utilities. And with Windows 10, there's a number of different uh, tools available. The Administrative Tools Control Panel is unusual, and it's a collection of shortcuts to applications. Computer Management is one of the administrative tools. It allows you to manage many aspects of your computer and remote computers in one time tool. The Event Viewer is helpful if you're having crashes or other problems. You can see the events that are happening on the computer system. Um, one of the ways that I, if I'm getting a system crash or if the system is crashing on me, I can go to the Event Viewer and look and see what happened right before the reboot occurred. And then you can maybe then diagnose what's up. You know, was it a driver that was bad? Was it a program that caused it or something like that? But you're given information, warnings, errors, critical, successful audits, or failure audits. The local users and groups provides an efficient way for managing users. You can create new users and new groups. And the different uh, groups are, you have administrators. They have full control of the computer. Guests can access the computer through a temporary profile or users, which are your normal users. The performance monitor is different than the performance monitor, or um, it's different from the performance information that's available through Task Manager. The purpose of the performance monitor administrative tool is, to, is the creation of detailed custom reports from specified counters. Component services and data sources. Um, it's an administrative tool used by administrators and developers to deploy, configure, and manage component object model or COM components. COM is a way to allow the use of software components in distributed environments, such as an enterprise, internet, or internet applications. The services area, or services.msc, allows you to manage all the services on your computer and remote computers. Data sources is a tool used by administrators to add, remove, and manage data sources using Open Database Connectivity, or ODBC. It's a technology that programs use to access a wide range of databases or data sources. The print management utility provides a detailed view of all the printers that are available to a computer. It's not available in all Windows editions. It is available in Windows Servers, Pro, and Enterprise, and Ultimate editions. The Windows Memory Diagnostics, it's a tool that schedules a memory test that will be executed when the computer starts. It can be configured to automatically restart the computer or execute the test the next time the computer starts. System information. Administrators can use the system information tool to collect and display information about a local and remote computers. It's designed to quickly find information about software, drivers, hardware, and computer components. With the system configuration, or the MS config tool, it's used to identify problems that keep Windows from starting correctly. So you can do the general, boot, services, startup, or tools. The registry, every setting in Windows is stored in a registry. When a user makes a change, the changes are stored in the registry. So the registry consists of a hierarchical, hierarchical arrangement of keys and subkeys represented as a tree. And the levels of the subkey tree can be deeply nested within a maximum of 512 levels. The registry exists as a database file called hives associated with each top level registry key. And each key has values. The values consist of the name of the value, its data type, and the setting or data. Um, a word of caution is when you are working with the registry, you want to be very careful. You always want to make a backup of your registry before you make changes. And these are the root keys here, local machine, current user, classes, users, and current config. The registry editor allows an administrator to view or make changes on the Windows registry. Again, I will caution you, always make a backup copy of your registry before you make any changes to it. Using the registry editor utility incorrectly could cause hardware, application, or OS problems, including having to reinstall your OS. So the registry editor can only be open from a search or command prompt. And you can search for regedit and open it from the search results or PowerShell prompt and type regedit. The Microsoft Management Console, or MMC, it's an application that allows for the creation of custom management consoles for collections of utilities and tools from Microsoft and other sources. The console can be saved and reopened when needed. 
and the figure on the right shows a new empty console with a dialog box for selecting and adding snap-ins. DXDIAG stands for DirectX Diagnostic Tool. It displays details for all the DirectX components. It's used to run from a search or from a command line. And DirectX is a software environment and interface for multimedia applications, especially games. It defines interfaces for 2D and 3D graphics, audio, media encoders, and decoders. The disk management utility. When you add a new drive into your Windows, you may have to come into the Windows management utility. It's open by click, right-clicking this PC or computer and selecting management. You can also get in by using the WinX menu and selecting disk management. In addition to extending and shrinking partitions, you can also use disk management utility to complete the following task. You can view a drive status, assign or change drive letters, add drives, add arrays, or designate the active partition. By checking the drive status, um, it lets you see the uh, status of each drive. The drives display one of the following conditions, foreign, healthy, initializing, missing, not initialized, online, unreadable, offline, or online errors. Now when you mount a drive, mounting a drive refers to making a disk image file readable as a drive. ISO files can have their contents written to a disk, but they also can be mounted on virtual drives. So to mount an image, you open File Explorer, select an ISO file in the ribbon, and then select Manage, manage, menu, manage menu under the Disk Image Tools and select Mount. The ISO file will then be mounted as a removable media drive. It sees it much like it was a CD in your CD drive or DVD drive, but it's virtual. The drive is an ISO image. It's mounted as a volume, and you can create a mount point, which is similar to a shortcut. You can add arrays. In Windows Disk Management, you can create mirrored, spanned, arrayed five arrays from multiple dynamic disks. This is done by right-clicking a volume and selecting the type of multi-disk volume that you want to create. And there must be two or more initialized dynamic drives available on the computer. Storage spaces is available in Windows 8 and Windows 10. And storage space is the disk array technology recommended by Windows. It creates a pool of physical hard drives from which virtual disk storage space can be created. You can run disk optimization. Uh, it's used, it has various tools for, with, for Windows. Uh, disk defragment gathers a non-contiguous data into one place, making the OS run faster. You do not want to perform disk defragmentation on SSD drives. It is not necessary to run disk defragmentation, and in fact, it can harm SSDs. SSDs are already optimized by their own controller and firmware, so it, sh it should not be harmful to defragment hybrid SSDs because they use hard disk to store data. And in Windows 8 and 10, the option is called Optimize. In Windows 7, it was called Defragment Now. The Optimize Drive utility allows analysis of the drive prior to the optimization as well. You can do disk error checking. Uh, it's tools that check the integrity of files and folders by scanning the hard drive surface for physical errors. The tool fixes the file system errors and checks the disk. System requirements. Before purchasing or attempting to install an application, you should verify that the system requirements are met. Requirements are normally defined in the software packaging or on the software download page. You want to check the processor speed, the RAM, the OS inversion, hard disk space, software dependencies, graphics and display, and network access. And if necessary, any peripheral devices. Installation methods. Uh, most applications use an automatic installation process. Uh, the user is required to click through the installation wizard steps and provide information when requested. Most Windows software installations are attended, meaning the user must pres be present to interact with the installer software. And then there's various types of installations that are defined. You can have attended, silent or unattended, scheduled, clean, or network. When you install applications, from, in this case, this is the Microsoft Store, uh, you can install from a CD, a DVD, or USB media. Um, if the software installation does not start automatically, you'll need to browse the installation folder and find the executable file. Uh, Microsoft has the MSI or Microsoft Silent Installer, or it'll have a .exe. If there's problems, you need to repair or uninstall the application. In addition to the process described above, Windows 8 and 10 provides access to the Microsoft Store, which will install apps for you and update apps as well. Compatibility mode. Older applications may not run properly on newer Windows operating systems. So if the older software is not running, you can locate the executable file, right-click it, 
and then choose the from the compatibility tab and you can run Windows compa compatibility troubleshooter or you can set and say I know this program will run, run under Windows 7 or Windows 8 so I'm going to run it under that version and then Windows will run it virtually underneath and it'll make the program think that it's that operating system. When you uninstall or change your program, if the application is uninstalled incorrectly, you might be leaving files on the hard drive and unnecessary settings in the registry, and that does waste hard drive space and system resources. So you want to make sure that you use the uninstall process properly. With security considerations, you want to allow users to install software on computers that are owned by, um, or by allowing users to install software on computers that are owned by a business. Um, that can be a security risk. So users can be tricked into downloading malicious software that can cause data loss. And malicious software known as malware can infect all computers. So as a technician, it's important to enforce policies regarding software installation and ensure that anti-malware software, uh, such as Windows Defender, that it's active and up to date. Command line tools. One of the most important command line tools that you can use is the PowerShell. The old Windows command line application was replaced in Windows Power User Menu with WinX um, with the PowerShell. The original command line still exists in Windows 10, and it can be opened by typing CMD in the search field, but PowerShell is more powerful, um, and I guess um, pun intended there. Uh, it offers advanced features such as scripting, automation. It also comes with its own scripting development environment called the PowerShell ISE. PowerShell uses commandlets or small applications that represent the commands, and the figure shown here is the Windows ISE. PowerShell can also be opened as the command line shell alone. This is what the command shell looks like. It has two command line utilities, PowerShell and the classic command, which is here on the left. Command has been the default command line for Windows until PowerShell with Windows 10 um, built in version 14791. You can also use Windows R to open and run the box, type command, or you can press Control shift enter to run the command prompt as an administrator. Some of the basic commands you can run are help to get information, command slash question mark gets help on a specific command, CLS clears the screen, up and down arrows, up arrow keys move through the previous entered commands, the F7 key displays command history, control C exits a running command, and exit closes the command window. Some syntax conventions, many conventions used by Microsoft for command line um, are summarized down below. Uh, special characters called wildcards can be substituted, so the asterisk or the question mark. When working at the command line, there's a no file explorer, or there's not any file explorer to help you uh, get the files in the folder. So you need to move through the folder structure using a combination of commands, normally displaying the contents of a drive or directory and changing the directories until you find what you're looking for. So these are some steps you can use. So you can type drive uh, that displays the contents from a different drive like D. DIR displays the contents of the current directory, and CD changes the directory. MD makes a new directory, RD removes a directory. Move moves a file or directory from one directory to another, and Ren renames a directory. You can also manipulate files with these commands. You can do the greater than sign, which is a redirect, type, more, delete, copy, x copy, robocopy, or move. You can do disk operations. You can check disk. That checks a file system for errors, including errors with physical media. You can do formatting, and you can also dis do disk partition. Commands are task list, task kill, DISM or deployment image servicing and management. That's used to work with system images before they're deployed. SFC, it verifies and repairs Windows system files and shutdown. Some other commands are GP update, that's the group policy update. GP result displays the group policy resultant set. Net use displays and connects to a network resource. Or net user displays and changes information about computer users. To run system utilities, the Windows Run Line utility can, can be opened by pressing Win R and then entering Command. You can also open up Explorer, MS, MMC, MS Info 32, MS TSC, that opens the remote desktop utility, and then Notepad. Windows Networking. A domain is a group of computers and electronic devices with a common set of rules and procedures. Computers in a domain can be located in different locations in the world. A specialized server called a domain controller manages all security-related aspects of users and network resources. And then you have work groups. That's a collection of workstations and servers on a LAN that are designed to communicate and exchange data with one another. You have the home group, but it's been removed from Windows 10. But if you are working with Windows 7, Windows 8 computers, um, you can have the home group. 
Uh, there can only be one home group per work group. Home groups are secured with a simple password. Home group availability depends on your network location. And when a computer joins a home group, all the user accounts on the computer except the guest account become members of the home group. Network file sharing and mapping network drives is a secure and convenient way to provide easy access to network resources. Permissions defined by the type of access a user has to a file or folder, read, change, or full control. Administrative shares are also called hidden shares. They are identified with the dollar sign at the end of the share name. By default, Windows creates several hidden administrative shares. These include the root folder of any local drive, the system folder, and the print drive folder. And administrative shares are hidden from users and only accessible by members of the local administrator group. And the figure up here shows the um, shares on a Windows 10 PC and the dollar sign after each share name. You can share local resources. Windows 10 controls which resources are shared and how they're shared by turning specific features on and off. Different options can be chosen for each profile. And to enable sharing resources between computers connected to the same work group, network discovery and file and print sharing must be turned on. You can share printer and printer resources. A local printer can be shared on the network via a sharing tab. Once a printer is shared, users with the correct permissions can connect to the shared printer over the network. Drivers for the printer can be installed on the local computer so that the clients obtain the drivers. And then to find the shared printer on the network, users can browse to the network resources. To configure a wired network with Windows 10, Windows 10 network settings are managed through the Network and Internet section of the Settings app. From the Network and Internet window, there are links to view the network properties and available network connections, both wired and wireless, can be viewed by selecting the Change Adapter Options link. From there, each network connection can be configured. To configure a wired network interface card, uh, it's installed in the, with the IP address. They must be configured, so you can either do it manually or dynamically. Dynamically will retrieve the IP address from the DHCP server. You can set a network profile. The first time a computer with Windows 10 connects to a network, a network profile must be selected. Depending on the profile, file and printer sharing or network discovery can be turned off or on. Windows 10 has two network profiles, public, that the public profile disables file and printer sharing and the network discovery on the, on the link. The PC is hidden from other devices. Private, the private profile allows the user to customize the sharing options, and this profile is for use on trusted networks. You can verify connectivity with the Windows GUI. The easiest way to test for internet connection is to open up a web browser and see if it's working. To troubleshoot a connection, you can use the Windows GUI or the command line. In Windows 10, the status of the network connection can be viewed under the General tab or you can open up a command line and type ping and ping your local uh, card or the uh, you can then ping or use ipconfig and ipconfig and look for your um, gateway and then ping your gateway and this is the ipconfig command it displays the ip basic configuration ipconfig slash all shows all of the network information if you need to release and then renew your ip information you can do that you can also display dns that displays the dns resolver cache that that keeps all of the IP addresses with the uh, DNS names. And if you're having trouble connecting to a site, you might go in and flush the DNS and that clears the DNS resolver cache and sometimes that will resolve some problems. Some network CLI commands. Ping is your basic command which tests connectivity between devices. Tracert uh, traces the route that packets take from a computer to a destination. NS lookup, it tests and troubleshoots DNS servers. It queries the DNS server to discover IP addresses or host names. On the wireless side, wireless networks can be added to Windows 10 by going to Settings, Network and Internet, and Wi-Fi. There are four security type options, no authentication or open, and data is sent unencrypted. WEP, that provides very weak security. WPA2, that uses the Advanced Encryption Standard, AES, or WPA2 Enterprise. That authentication is passed from the access point to a centralized authentication server. You can have VPN access in Windows. A VPN is a virtual private network. When VPN connects to the corporate private network, users become part of that network and have access to all the services. Remote access users must install a VPN client on their computers to form a secure connection. And the VPN software encrypts data before sending it over the internet. Telnet and SSH. Telnet is sometimes used for troubleshooting and uh, troubleshooting services or connecting to routers and switches. Telnet messages are sent in clear text, so anyone with a packet sniffer can capture and see those uh, commands. Secure Shell, or SSH, is an, an encrypted alternative to Telnet and other file copy programs. 
and SSH server authentication methods include username and password, Kerberos, host-based authentication, and public key authentication. Common preventative maintenance techniques for operating systems. You need to have a good preventative maintenance plan. It provides many benefits to the users and to the organization, such as decreased downtime, improved performance, improved reliability, and lower repair cost. Preventative maintenance plans should prioritize equipment that would affect the organization in the most um, the organization the most if that equipment fails. Preventative maintenance for an OS includes automating tasks to perform scheduled updates and installing service packs. Preventative maintenance also includes hard drive error disk checking or hard drive error checking, defragmentation, backing up, updates to the operating system, applications, antivirus checks, and other protective software. Windows Update is a website located at update.microsoft.com. The site hosts maintenance updates, critical updates, and security patches. Microsoft releases updates on the second Tuesday of each month, unofficially known as Patch Day or Patch Tuesday. Windows 10 automatically downloads and installs updates to make sure your device is secure and to date. And you can manually check for updates in Windows 10 by settings and update and security. You can create restore points. Sometimes installing an application or a hard drive uh, a hardware driver can cause instability. So before you do that, you want to create a restore point. So if uninstalling the application or hardware doesn't correct the problem after you have a problem with it, you can re- roll back a re- to a restore point. So if a computer crashes or an update causes the problems, uh, you can also roll back. System restore does not back up personal data files, nor does it recover personal files that have been corrupted or deleted. And you want to create a restore point before making any changes, major changes to your system. When you update your OS, when installing or upgrading hardware, when installing an application, or when installing a driver. It's important to establish a backup strategy that includes data recovery of personal files. You can use the Microsoft Backup Utility. It can take a long time to run a backup. So if the backup strategy is followed carefully, though, it's not necessary to back up all the files every time. You can just back up files that have changed since the last time it was backed up. Applying troubleshooting process, applying the troubleshooting process to Windows operating systems. Again, we're going to look at the six steps of the troubleshooting process, and I'm going to pause on each one of these. I'm not going to talk on each one of these, but I'm just going to pause on each one, and you can pause the video to read these questions.